1967, director Richard Brooks brought Truman Capote's groundbreaking non-fiction novel, In Cold Blood, to the silver screen. This stark and gripping film recounts the true story of the senseless murder of the Clutter family in rural Kansas. The movie's power lies in its unflinching portrayal of the events leading up to and following this brutal crime, as well as its exploration of the psychology behind the perpetrators. The narrative unfolds with chilling precision, capturing the harrowing reality of the crime and the subsequent investigation. The film's documentary-style approach, coupled with Brooks' commitment to authenticity, creates an immersive experience that lingers in the viewer's mind long after the credits roll. The question arises, can you share a personal story of how this movie has inspired or impacted your life? Or is there a particular scene or moment in this movie that has had a lasting impact on you? Now, let's delve into some compelling details about the movie. The ensemble cast, led by Robert Blake and Scott Wilson as the killers, delivers performances that heighten the film's intensity. Brooks skillfully weaves together the perspectives of the murderers, the investigators, and the victims' families, fostering a complex understanding of the tragedy. The film not only grapples with the brutality of the crime, but also delves into the societal and psychological factors that contributed to such a heinous act. Its unrelenting examination of the human condition makes it a timeless exploration of crime and punishment. As we reflect on this impactful film, we're curious. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to In Cold Blood? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. In Cold Blood, a 1967 film directed by Richard Brooks, is a chilling adaptation of Truman Capote's groundbreaking nonfiction novel. The movie recounts the true story of the senseless and brutal murder of the Clutter family in Holcomb, Kansas, exploring the psychology of the perpetrators, Perry Smith and Dick Hickok. Portrayed with haunting authenticity by Robert Blake and Scott Wilson, respectively, the characters are meticulously developed, drawing the audience into their disturbed minds. The film's unique narrative style blends crime procedural with psychological drama, creating a gripping experience that delves into the complexity of human nature and the consequences of violence. Brooks' decision to shoot the film in black and white adds a stark, documentary-like quality, intensifying the impact of the harrowing events. In Cold Blood not only set a benchmark for true crime cinema but also left an indelible mark on popular culture by influencing subsequent crime dramas. Its legacy endures as a chilling exploration of the darkest corners of the human psyche, a testament to the power of storytelling that transcends the boundaries of fiction and reality. Truman Capote's substantial financial gain from the 1967 film In Cold Blood is noteworthy. Earning a 30% cut of the film's gross, Capote raked in about $25 million in 2011 dollars after taxes and adjusting for inflation, a substantial sum considering both the book and the film's success. The movie's impact wasn't confined to the box office. Capote's estate earned an additional $2 million from book sales alone in recent years. This financial success adds another layer to the film's legacy, showcasing its enduring influence and profitability long after its initial release. In Cold Blood, shot over 129 days in the spring of 1967, stands as a cinematic achievement with its meticulous portrayal of the Clutter family murder. A noteworthy aspect of the production is the four weeks spent filming at the actual Clutter family farm, compensating the residing family with $15,000 for the disruption caused. This commitment to authenticity adds a layer of realism to the chilling narrative. Decades later, one of the film's stars, Robert Blake, who played murderer Perry Smith, found himself entangled in a real-life true crime episode. In 2001, Blake's second wife, Bonnie Lee Backley, was murdered. Although Blake was acquitted of murder and solicitation charges in a highly publicized trial, a subsequent civil suit held him responsible, resulting in a significant financial penalty. Adding an intriguing element to the film's adaptation is the character of Jensen the Reporter, portrayed by Paul Stewart. A departure from Truman Capote's original work, this edition aimed to introduce a Greek chorus-like perspective, a choice later questioned by Capote himself. Despite the divergence from the source material, the character contributes to the film's unique narrative style. 
These behind-the-scenes and post-release developments offer a deeper understanding of the 1967 movie in Cold Blood, highlighting the enduring impact it had on both its creators and stars, extending beyond the boundaries of fiction into the complexities of real-life events. The casting choices for the 1967 movie in Cold Blood took an unexpected turn. Columbia Pictures initially aimed for Paul Newman and Steve McQueen as the lead actors, envisioning them in the roles of the cold-blooded murderers, Perry Smith and Dick Hickok. However, both actors opted for different projects that year, with Newman choosing Cool Hand Luke and Homber, while McQueen focused on the Thomas Crown Affair and Bullet. The shift in casting led to Robert Blake and Scott Wilson stepping into the roles, delivering hauntingly authentic performances that became pivotal to the film's impact. Interestingly, the initial choices of Newman and McQueen could have offered a different dynamic to the portrayal of the real-life events. Beyond casting, the film's commitment to authenticity extended to the locations. The store depicted in a crucial scene where the two killers make a purchase is the actual store where the real-life perpetrators bought their items. The shopkeeper in the film is also the same person who interacted with the murderers during the tragic events, adding a layer of realism to the narrative. Moreover, a chilling detail on the movie poster adds another layer of authenticity. The two pairs of eyes staring out from the poster belong to the real killers, not the actors who portrayed them on screen. This subtle but impactful choice in promotional material connects the audience directly to the grim reality that inspired the film. These behind-the-scenes details contribute to the overall authenticity and impact of the 1967 movie in Cold Blood, showcasing the intricate decisions made during its production that shaped the narrative. From casting choices that diverged from the initial plan to the use of real locations and subtle details in promotional material, each element adds to the film's unique and chilling portrayal of true crime. To capture the raw authenticity of Truman Capote's chilling narrative in the 1967 film In Cold Blood, director Richard Brooks spared no effort in filming on actual locations. The clutter house where the brutal murders occurred and the real courtroom were meticulously recreated. Notably, six of the actual jurors participated in the courtroom scenes, adding a layer of realism to the portrayal of the tragic events. Even Nancy Clutter's horse, Babe, played a role in some scenes, emphasizing Brooks' commitment to authenticity. However, the film's authenticity extends beyond Kansas. In a 2017 interview, Scott Wilson, who portrayed one of the murderers, clarified that the prison scenes were shot in Colorado, not the actual Kansas State Penitentiary. The hanging scene, a pivotal moment in the film, was staged on a Columbia soundstage, diverging from the real gallows used in the historical events. This dedication to real locations and details was crucial for Brooks, who aimed to immerse the audience in the grim reality of the Clutter family murder. Notably, the decision to shoot the film in black and white, saving costs, added a stark, documentary-like quality. Brooks believed that color would romanticize the bleak narrative, opting for a monochromatic approach that intensified the impact of the harrowing events. While striving for authenticity, the film also incorporates subtle nods to its source material. In the jail scene at the end, an issue of Life magazine featuring Truman Capote's image hangs on Andy's wall, connecting the film to the author's groundbreaking work. In summary, the 1967 film In Cold Blood stands as a testament to Richard Brooks' commitment to authenticity. Filming in actual locations, using real jurors, and opting for black and white cinematography, Brooks crafted a gripping cinematic experience that delves into the complexity of human nature and the consequences of violence. As the credits roll on our cinematic journey through the chilling tale of In Cold Blood, the echoes of its haunting narrative linger in the corridors of our minds. This classic piece of cinematography isn't just a film. It's a mirror reflecting the depths of the human psyche and the harrowing consequences of a fateful encounter. As you emerge from this cinematic experience, take a moment to let the weight of Truman Capote's narrative settle. In the quiet aftermath, consider the layers of emotion and thought that this masterpiece has stirred within you. Perhaps it's the evocative performances that etch themselves into your memory or the atmospheric cinematography that transports you to the heart of the Kansas landscape. Now, I extend an invitation to you, dear reader, viewer, let's traverse the corridors of memory together. Share your reflections, your favorite scenes, or the characters that left an indelible mark on your soul. 
How did In Cold Blood resonate with your own experiences and perspectives? In this shared space, let's weave a tapestry of diverse thoughts and emotions connecting through the universal language of storytelling. Your voice adds depth to the narrative, making this exploration richer and more profound. Whether you were captivated by the moral ambiguity, the suspenseful storytelling, or the profound exploration of human nature, your perspective is a valuable thread in the fabric of our collective understanding. Thank you for embarking on this introspective journey with me. Your time and thoughts are precious, and I'm genuinely grateful for the opportunity to connect over the profound impact of In Cold Blood. Share your reflections, and let's continue this dialogue that transcends time and screens. Reflect, reminisce, and share it's your turn to add to the legacy of this cinematic masterpiece.